Hey everybody, it's Nathan, and I've got something special for you today. We're getting a lot of questions about 1099s. They're a little different this year. We've got different kinds coming out. We've asked Pastor Raul to give you some insight on how to handle 1099s in 2022. Glad you guys are here. Well, thank you, Nathan, and I'm very glad to address this topic because there are a lot of pastors and, 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 and church administrators calling in saying, what do I do with this 1099 that I received or should I be giving out a 1099? And so I'm gonna cover three different types of 1099s today that are gonna be very common in 2022. So number one, your church is likely to receive form 1099, if, especially if you have a third-party merchant provider where you accept ties and offerings and donations to your church online, and people use their credit cards or debit cards to make those donations. The rule is that if you receive at least 200 transactions per year, and it's $20,000 or more, then that organization, the, the, the merchant provider, is going to be required to issue that form to you. The good news is that as a church, you probably already have your 501c3 status and you are tax exempt, so you don't have to report it unless some of that income reported on Form 1099-K is unrelated business income. Maybe the church engaged in an activity that's not typically related to church activities and you're required to f file that on Form 990, which is a separate topic. However, most churches won't have to do anything with Form 1099-K other than to keep it in their records. Now there's two other forms. There's form 1099 NEC, and then there's form 1099 miscellaneous. What's the difference? They almost look alike, or we thought they were one and the same. Well, form 1099 NEC is a form that used to exist way back in the 70s and 80s, and in 1982, the IRS stopped using it and consolidated it into just form 1099 miscellaneous. Now, here we are in 2022, and the IRS is saying, well, maybe we need to separate those again. So let me explain the difference. If you give non-employee compensation to an individual who maybe preached at the church or does lawn maintenance or cleaning at the church or any individual to whom the church paid 600 or more, but they weren't an employee, then you're going to be required to give that employee a Form 1099 NEC. That means anyone who receives from your church $600 or more combined for the whole year needs to receive this form. What about Form 1099 miscellaneous? That form has been changed, and usually when you issue the old 1099 miscellaneous to a, a minister of the gospel, you would write that on box seven. Now you don't even use Form 1099 miscellaneous because you use Form 1099 NEC. So what do you do with the miscellaneous? That form has been now changed so that if your church, let me give you an example. Your church has a, a cafe and every week you buy blueberry muffins from the same person who's a great baker and over the entire year, you purchase $5,500 from that baker. The form 1099 miscellaneous says that if you pay 5,000 or more, in which in, to an individual person who sells to you a product, and this is the difference, you are buying a product that your church will use for resale. So you bought the muffins, you're gonna resell them to the, the congregation or people who come in. If you spent 5,000 or more with that same baker, then you have to issue that baker form 1099 miscellaneous. So how do you give them the form? Well, before you ever bought your first muffin from the baker, you should have given him Form W-9. And Form W-9, in that form, he'll be able to give you his name, his trade name, his social security number, and his address so that you would use that to enter that information into your uh, accounting records so that at the end of the year, based on that, on, those, on that information, you can properly create a Form 1099 miscellaneous. I hope I haven't confused you because these topics get really hairy at times when we're trying to figure it out and we've seen it for the very first time. So just remember, there are three forms, Form 1099-K, Form 1099-NEC, and form 1099 
miscellaneous. I hope this segment has been very helpful to you and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this information with you.